Yes, so uh, my name is Alexandra. I, um, I am half French and half English, uh, but I live in France. I was born in France and I've always lived in France. I started my music studies of really young as a pianist and then switched to the violin when I was, uh, when I was 13. And uh, I always knew I wanted to play the cello, but because I was 13, my hand was already a bit too formed. So uh, it was difficult to, for, my, for my hand to reach the, the, to reach the right notes. So uh, I, st I stuck to the violin, but I soon discovered there was something called the viola, which, was, which went more towards the cello in the, in the sounds and what I wanted to hear. But I knew I wanted to play Baroque music. <laughs> So I played as a freelance musician uh, in modern orchestras, symphony orchestras, for a long time, many years, because life doesn't necessarily give you what you, what you need on the moment, and uh, for many reasons it just didn't happen uh, in, immediately. And then uh, a good ten years later I decided it was time for me to Maybe not switch over to Baroque music because I still play on modern instruments as well and I teach on modern instruments and I, I still play with symphony orchestras but my real love lies with the Baroque repertoire and up to the classical uh, repertoire. So uh, that's when I switched and then uh, the orchestra in Versailles was born and, uh, and I think you and the rest is, uh, that's why we're here. <laughs> It's very, it's very organic for me. I, it's just, I mean, if, if, I, if I listen to, uh, let's say, I don't know, a symphony by Tchaikovsky or a piece by Vivaldi, there is one which will give me goosebumps and my hair will, you know, and I will want to, I will want to dance and to play it and I will want to, I will feel it in my whole body. And it's not the same, I love, uh, also the repertoire after Mozart, after the classical period. But it doesn't give me the same... It, yes, it's very organic, it's inside me. I, can, I can't really explain it, but something in me, in it, just uh, resonates with my whole body and not just my mind or my fingers or... It's, it's all of me. Probably the main difference is, the main one for me, the um, fingerboard, it's it's less uh, less um, uncleanly. How do you say that in English? Less, well, you, you see what I mean. And it's thicker as well. You see, there's a difference. This part there, it does not exist on modern violas. It's a little bit shorter. The bridge is different as well. It's got more holes in it for more resonance. Um, and well, of course, one of the big differences. It's not. Is speci specifically on the instrument, but in modern repertoire we add a chin rest, always, whereas in bar Baroque, in the Baroque repertoire, and you can even play a classical repertoire without the chin rest, because you just, it, it sits on the, on, the, on the shoulder blade, and, it, and you just, your head is more, much more free. And in the Baroque, in the modern repertoire, it's usually here or here, the chin rest. There's a little wooden, black wooden piece, which you, you, and it means you hold the, the instrument. So there's, a, there's a, a sort of something with your head, you hold it down. For me, it means less uh, freedom. Uh, that's one of the big differences. And of course, the strings are different. Uh, these are gut strings, real, real gut. This is probably sheep and uh, cow for the big ones. Uh, the, the, the two, the two uh, bottom ones have uh, metal, they're f they're, they're, there's a metal um, uh, filleting, but it's gut, it's uh, natural gut. Whereas modern strings, in 90% of the cases, are, uh, are metal strings. And the bow is different as well, this is a baroque bow, this is a late baroque bow, so you have many different types of bows but it's very different i don't have a modern bow they're here to show you but it's very different the the the, the tip is very long whereas on a modern bow it would stop more like that uh, this is very different as well uh, but this is quite late because it has something to tighten it whereas in early baroque uh, bows 
uh, it has tightened the, the, the hair, you see, because you can, you can loosen it up. This is when you put your bow away. And in early Baroque bows, it is tightened with the, with the finger, you, you, you hold it. And then they developed a system to, for the tension to be always, always there. So the bow is very different as well. There's less sound on a, on a Baroque instrument because of the, gut, uh, of the gut strings. The word which comes to me when, I've, when I try to describe the sound from a gut string is peppery, as if there was a little bit of pepper in it. It, it has this little, you know, little, yeah, peppery, I don't, I don't know how to... And the sound, there's, it's less, it, there's less projection. Uh, if, you put, if you play with a modern viola next to a Baroque viola, the Baroque viola will be completely swamped. You, you, there will, it will seem as if there is no sound. And also there's this... Uh, especially on the A string, the, the high one, there's this little... Um, peppery sound. <laughs> yes, a little bit of spice and like a little kick, you know, uh, which is not on the, on the, for me, not on the modern instruments. And I find there's more, there are more harmonics as well in the string. The aura around the sound than the sound itself. Whereas on metal strings, uh, there will, of course, there will be some projection, but then some dy dynamics around it. But there will be, the sound itself will be more precise and more, all the, the exterior sound which make up the, the complete sound will be less present because it's an artificial material. The program we played here before was absolutely beautiful with the three, the three counter tenors. I think if I had to choose, I would choose the um, Alto Giove with a uh, hue, uh, especially on the night we played in Seoul. It was, it's, that piece is so, such, so touching and so it has a, an enormous range of emotions and there's a lot we can do as the, as the orchestra behind to, to just be there and beneath him and you know, carry him through the piece. Uh, yeah, I think that would be my, my favorite. During the pandemic, and uh, we, we had quite a few things which were programmed before the pandemic, and of course everything was thrown over, and uh, all the concerts we had planned uh, were, were turned into recordings, either video recordings or CDs, uh, rehearsals, and there were, uh, there were more things adding on, actually. So, at a time when the whole world had stopped, we were extremely fortunate to be able to, not only did we still, were we still able to work, but we had more work coming in. And we, we were in the castle and the castle was empty. And we're talking about the Chateau de Versailles, which is like, you know, one of the most visited places in the world. And I remember we, we used to drive down to Versailles for rehearsals and we were driving in the Chateau and it was empty. And it felt like being, after a bit, it, it felt a bit like being at home, you know. And I think all of us were really con conscious, really conscious of how fortunate we were to have work and to, to be able to walk around the chateau empty and see everything. You see th things differently, obviously, when, there, when there's no one and when there are loads of tourists walking around. And that felt, that felt such a privilege. It was amazing. It was really amazing. Ah, I think, I think at some point, uh, if especially as musicians, we know how to listen to things, and we, we I think we are very adaptable. And I think at some point uh, in in your life, you know where you need to go to to be to feel to feel fulfilled and happy and balanced. And uh, I think that's probably the. That's probably the thing. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not as young as I look, and uh, I know what I want and I know what I don't want, and I definitely know that I want to to do this. But I think I've been through as everyone. I've been through things, through many things, and uh, sometimes bad things in life open up 
doors which you weren't expecting, and behind those doors, there are there's this sort of thing, this orchestra, this uh, this turning towards baroque music, and uh, I think it's a lot of it, uh, it's an addition of many things, uh, living through difficult things in life, and you know, uh, day after day, you know what you want and how to achieve it, and uh, I think that's what brought me here uh, today. Mm-hmm. <laughs>